The crowd's roar filled the arena as the chute swung open and the bull exploded out, spinning and kicking frantically. Sitting atop 1,500 pounds of raging muscle and sinew was a lean, focused cowboy, his gloved hand clenched tight on the bull rope. Lane Frost held on for dear life, his lithe body absorbing the bone-jarring bucks and gyrations of the massive beast beneath him. Eight seconds stretched into an eternity as man and bull battled, the crowd screaming encouragement. With a final mighty kick, the bull sent Lane flying, but not before he reached back and grabbed a fistful of fur. He had made the buzzer. The crowd went wild as Lane jumped to his feet, fist pumping triumphantly before tipping his hat and unleashing his million-dollar grin. This was Lane's element, and he was born to be here. Until one fateful day, when the cheers of the crowd turned to silent gasps of horror. What happened to this experienced bull rider in those final moments? On October 12, 1963, Lane Clyde Frost entered the world in La Junta, Colorado. His father Clyde was off competing on the professional rodeo circuit at the time, a bareback rider chasing his dreams of glory. Rodeo was in Lane's blood from the very beginning. As a baby, little Lane would sleep soundly until the bull riding event, when suddenly he'd spring to life, eyes fixed intently on the action. His mother Elsie swore he understood what was happening, that the flying hooves, flared nostrils, and wild bucking spoke to his soul. By age three, Lane would throw wild tantrums if his parents tried to leave the rodeo early. The bull riding had to be seen. The Frost family operated a dairy farm in Vernal, Utah, where an energetic young Lane learned to ride atop frisky calves. He entered his first rodeo at age nine, placing first in bareback riding atop a Shetland pony. A prodigy was already emerging. At ten, Lane won the Utah State Bull Riding title, the first of many championships to come. After moving to Lane, Oklahoma in his early teens, Lane absorbed all he could from family friend and legendary bull rider Freckles Brown. Lane was mesmerized by Freckles' old rodeo films, studying his moves and honing his skills. By high school, Lane was renouncing any notion of college, telling his parents he would be a world champion bull rider. No plan B needed. Lane's confidence was clearly justified. He claimed the National High School Rodeo Bull Riding title in 1981, capping off a stellar high school career. The Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association welcomed the Oklahoma Phenom with open arms in 1983. Lane took the rodeo world by storm, qualifying for the National Finals Rodeo in his rookie season, a feat unmatched by any first-year bull rider before or since. His talents were undeniable, and unlimited potential lay before him. In 1987, Lane's childhood prophecy came true as he captured the coveted PRCA World Championship Bull Rider title. At just 24 years old, he had reached the pinnacle, fulfilling a lifelong dream. Lane brought a new energy and style to the sport, wowing crowds with his fluid athleticism, showmanship, and dazzling smile. Kids flocked to him, wanting autographs and photos. If not for his tragic death, Lane would have undoubtedly gone down as one of rodeo's all-time greats, ushering in a new golden era for bull riding. In this extreme sport world, the rider has to maintain the eight-second rule, the standard time they must stay mounted on the bull in order to qualify for a score in bull riding competitions. Specifically, the rider must stay atop the bucking bull for eight seconds while only holding a bull rope. The timer starts when the bull's shoulder or flank breaks the plane of the gate as it exits the chute. The rider's free hand cannot touch the bull or themselves. The ride is timed until the rider touches the ground or the bull with their free hand. To qualify, the rider must remain mounted for the full eight seconds while spurring in a rhythmic motion. If the rider makes eight seconds, they're scored based on degree of control and aggression. If the rider fails to stay on for eight seconds, they receive no score. The eight-second standard is designed to test the rider's skill and athleticism in maintaining control while the massive bull is bucking and spinning with explosive power. The clock only stops when the rider is thrown off or dismounts. This eight-second ride is considered the heart and soul of professional bull riding competition. 
Part of Frost's legacy stems from his conquest of the legendary bull Red Rock in 1988. With a reputation for explosive power and being impossible to ride, Red Rock was voted PRCA Bucking Bull of the Year in 1987, after dispatching all challengers for years. When word emerged that the unrideable Red Rock would clash with PRCA champion Lane Frost in a made-for-TV event, the challenge of the champions quickly gained national attention. The Athletic Matador versus the Unvanquished Beast. All the drama and intrigue of a prize fight. Seven epic showdowns between Lane and Red Rock stoked public interest in rodeo to heights it had never seen before. Frost emerged victorious in four of their seven meetings, riding the previously unridden Juggernaut. Their epic man versus beast battle riveted audiences and became embedded in rodeo lore. Lane Frost had etched his name in history. Beyond the arena, Lane endeared himself to everyone he met with an easygoing charm and welcoming nature. Kids especially were drawn to this larger-than-life cowboy hero. Lane never turned down an autograph request, taking time with each fan as if they were old friends. His warm smile and earnest interest made them feel like the most important person in the world. Lane's friend and fellow bull rider Tuff Hedeman once remarked, if Lane had two broken legs, he'd have walked out of that arena. His pain tolerance was legendary, but it was his toughness of spirit that set Lane apart. When a disappointed young fan needed consoling after Lane failed to ride, he lifted the boy onto his shoulders and told him not to worry, they'd get him next time. Lane felt a responsibility to be a positive role model, recognizing his own influence and impact. Though reaching the pinnacle of his sport, Lane maintained a disarming humility. The shy, small-town Oklahoma farm boy remained at his core, staying true to his roots. Success and fame never spoiled Lane Frost or altered his rock-solid character. He represented the very best of the modern cowboy. Late July 1989 found Lane Frost embarking on a familiar road trip, pilgrimaging to the hallowed rodeo shrine of Cheyenne Frontier Days in Wyoming. Cheyenne Frontier Days is viewed as the preeminent rodeo event, with deep history and significance in the sport of rodeo and cowboy culture. Competing and winning there is seen as a crowning achievement for any cowboy's career. Perched high atop the standings, Lane's eyes were fixed on another bull-riding world title. His young wife, Kelly, stayed behind to begin work as a stunt double on an upcoming film, their days together numbered by his endless rodeoing. Newly embraced Christianity had Lane pondering life after bulls, dreams of raising children, training horses, and building a family ranch awaiting his return. But fate had other plans in store. The overcast skies and rain-soaked dirt of Cheyenne Frontier Days set an ominous scene as Lane Frost prepared for a ride that would turn deadly. It was July 30th, 1989. He was matched up with a mighty bull named Taken Care of Business, a 1,700-pound beast known for his aggression and tendency to spin in tight, quick circles. As Lane wrapped his hand in athletic tape and pulled on his leather bull-riding glove, he looked calm and focused. He had qualified for the NFR five years in a row and had already won the 1987 World Champion Bull Rider title. Many said Lane had no fear when it came to riding. He climbed fearlessly onto the chutes before each bull, his steely gaze taking measure of the animal beneath him. The chute gate swung open, and taking care of business exploded out, spinning hard to the right. Lane counteracted the spin with his own body movement, working his hips to match the rhythm of the spins. For a few heart-stopping seconds, man and beast were perfectly in sync. Like the talented professional he was, Lane held his seat for eight adrenaline-filled seconds, the last ride of his young life. And then, the unthinkable happened. Lane dismounted with control, another successful achievement that would give him third place that day. But as he landed in the mud and rolled clear, the enraged bull turned abruptly and charged. Before Lane could react, the bull pressed into his back with its right horn, pushing him to the muddy arena floor and breaking several ribs. Lane scrambled to his feet as the rodeo clowns tried to distract the angry bull, but the unseen damage was already done. Lane walked a few steps towards safety before suddenly lurching forward. His fellow riders rushed to catch him 
as he collapsed. Frantic efforts were made to stop the bleeding as an ambulance raced across the Cheyenne Arena at sirens wailing. Dr. Skip Ross was the first responder to attend Frost after the bull pounded into him. Frost had broken ribs that impacted his heart. Still visibly moved by recalling the events of that fateful day, Ross now quietly says he knows the injury was something you couldn't fix. The trauma team rushed Lane to the hospital, working frantically to revive the dying young man. The medical team applied internal and external heart massage, desperately trying to sustain the life force that was quickly ebbing away. But the extensive internal injuries overwhelmed every heroic effort. Lane Clyde Frost was pronounced dead at the hospital. His stormy rodeo journey over at just 25 years old. The bull had inflicted a precise, untreatable blow that even Lane's legendary toughness could not overcome. At the time Lane was competing, helmets and protective vests were not required. Many riders saw them as unfashionable or uncomfortable in the sweltering outdoor arenas. But preventing head and torso injuries quickly became a top priority following Lane's accident. Within months, most major rodeo circuits updated their bylaws to mandate helmets for all bull riders. Lane's close friend and fellow rider Cody Lambert was profoundly affected, feeling compelled to help prevent similar tragedies. Lambert worked to develop the first protective vest designed specifically for bull riding, utilizing new impact-absorbing materials. After over a year of testing prototypes, the Lane Frost Model 01 vest was introduced in 1990. Its life-saving potential was quickly realized as grievous injuries became rarities. Frost's legacy paved the way for new standards, as vests were soon mandated by all major bull riding organizations. Lighter weight materials like vulcanized rubber and high-density foam provided padding over vital organs without restricting movement. The vests adapted to better contour a rider's back and side, deflecting horn impacts away from vulnerable areas. Along with protective equipment, the positioning of sports medicine teams on site during rodeo events significantly improved. Having trained emergency response crews and trauma surgeons ready to spring into action lessened the critical treatment delays that likely could not be overcome in Lane Frost's case in 1989. Their presence demonstrates rodeos taking responsibility for the inherent risks the sport poses. 35 years later, Lane's legacy continues pushing the dangerous sport of bull riding to be safer, more prepared to respond to accidents, and focused on a cowboy's long-term health and livelihood. Protective gear can only do so much against a 2,000-pound animal, but honoring Lane's memory means taking precautions so no rider meets the same tragic end. Champion Lane Frost, a 15-foot-tall, monumental bronze sculpture by Casper artist Chris Navarro, is now a permanent memorial to the bull rider at Cheyenne Frontier Days. Seeing potential for an inspiring story about living fearlessly, director John G. Avildsen brought Lane's life to the big screen just three years after his tragic death. The 1992 film Eight Seconds starred Luke Perry as Lane and Cynthia Geary as his widow Kelly. Though not a blockbuster, the movie gained a cult following on video and introduced Lane Frost to a wider audience. The iconic final ride and accident brought many viewers to tears. Lane's daring style and cowboy charisma also struck a chord with country music artists in the 1990s. Chris Ledoux penned a song, Tougher Than The Rest, as a tribute, singing, We all thought he was tougher than the rest, but he rode one bull too many. Singer Garth Brooks asked Kelly Frost's blessing to include her as a character in his video for The Dance, allowing Lane's memory to appear in the massively popular video. Country music star Zach Bryan's middle name is Lane, after Frost, and his 2022 song, Open the Gate, is a tribute to his namesake. When asked if the family was going to leave the rodeo scene forever, Lane's mother commented, If we walked away from rodeo, we were going to lose all our friends and all of Lane's friends. We sure didn't want to do that. Lane wouldn't have changed anything about what he did or how he lived. We just couldn't see not continuing on. Leaving rodeo wasn't an option for us. We know where Lane is. It still hurts, but that's such a comfort. Lane was always so tickled when someone asked him for an autograph. He must be blown away that he's still getting so much attention. I can just see him grinning and rubbing his hands together.
35 years later, the name Lane Frost still conjures vivid memories across rodeo country. The blazing talent, the courageous heart, the unbreakable spirit. His loved ones cherish the memories of this extraordinary cowboy who lived and loved without limits. A guiding light for those who dare to pursue their dreams.